Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another Doodlebug 6x6 paper pad tutorial, this time featuring pumpkin spice. Lately I've shared a couple of different paper pads that are Christmas themed, but I'm kind of taking a break and going back to fall. This is being recorded in October and probably will be posted in October. So even though I am thinking ahead a little bit to Christmas, I love fall and I don't want to skip it. I actually probably started making Halloween cards in August, <laughs> but you always got to work ahead as a crafter. Anyway, here's the pumpkin spice paper pad from Doodlebug. Their designs are really cute. I like the sort of coffee theme. It reminded me of a collection that they a more like completely coffee based collection that they had a couple of years ago, I want to say. I honestly can't remember what the name of it is at this time, but it has a lot of uh, similar cute images and then a fall twist added to it. But I will say I was a little bit bummed that they decided to seem to like switch it up and instead of doing the cut aparts in the sizes they used to do where you used to get like six on one page and they were a little bit bigger. Now the cut aparts are, are a little bit different. They are very scrapbooking based. Like it says my favorite I'm thankful for. Like to me those are things that you would put on a, on a scrapbook page and do journaling with. So we're going to use them but we're going to get creative. Before that, I, I want to share how I'm doing my sentiments today. For the most part, I got this stamp set in the middle of make, working on this paper pad, or actually kind of towards the beginning, but I already made a few. So, but most of the cards will use these sentiments. This is a tailored expression stamp and die combination. You can purchase multiple stamp sets that work with the same die cut. So it might seem a little bit pricey at first. However, because you can use the same die with all the ones that it goes like there's a um so for instance i'm using the happy harvest or the harvest ones there's also halloween there's christmas there's valentine's day there's easter i think there's like a patriotic u.s patriotic one um so i really thought that was great they have a similar product that's larger and is not so holiday oriented, but because I make a lot of holiday cards, I decided to go with the mini strips. So what this is, is you stamp all those sentiments in one go. You see it's a rubber cling stamp that's on my Misty door here. You do not have to have a Misty, but you would have to have a larger stamp block. Well, actually not even true because sometimes with these larger stamps, when I had six by six stamps, in the past before I had a Misty, I would ink them up and just press my paper to it. So you could try that, but Misty certainly makes it easy. So I stamped that down, um, all the sentiments at one time. Then I put this custom die that goes with the sentiment stamp set and it cuts all the sentiments at the same time. And I am in love, like to have so many sentiments so quickly and different ones is awesome. I am usually, die cutting and going through my die cut machine so many times to get all the banners that I need to make these really large batches of cards and maybe you don't need this if you just make a few cards at a time but when I when I'm making these videos and I'm making 30 to 40 cards it is this is going to be an awesome product so I stamped it six times I ran it through my die cut six times it only took one piece of eight and a half cardstock to do that too and they're very simple they are just rectangles but the die gives them a little bit of a finished look and I have been really happy. This is also a storage system created by Tailored Expressions that coordinates. So you can put all the strips of the same sentiment into these little like, I don't know, uh, compartments. And there's little bumps so you can still stick your finger in and get them out easily. And then that way I have that little tray on my desk and can just pull a sentiment as I'm working and creating all of these cards. So I will leave you links to that in the video description. A lot of times the video, the links in the video description are affiliate links. I'm not actually affiliated with Tailored Expressions though, um, just as a heads up, but I think that that is a really, really awesome product. So I still wanted to share it with you. All right. So now we're going to focus on the paper pad. Um, and I started by using those little tiny cut aparts with the coffee cup and there's one with a truck as well. They're really tiny, but um, this was before I had got, I got the, like I mentioned before, I got the tailored expressions like partway through making this paper pad tutorial. So I stamped the happy fall from a Hello Bluebird stamp set. And you certainly don't need that fancy stamp and die set that I showed you. Um, you could stamp very similarly 
and cut strips like this happy fall would work perfect in strips um, for example but I decided to give these little cut aparts a bit more weight by putting them with a very simple orange plaid pattern paper one piece of the orange plaid and I was able to get all four of those backgrounds of sorts then I'm going to use this leaf paper to also kind of coordinate I'm going to cut it to well sorry all measurements will be on my blog I will not say all the measurements of everything I cut I simply don't remember and I don't want to confuse you and personally when I listen to these type of videos and I love seeing different people's takes on six by six paper pads I can't follow along with that anyway I would need a blog post so that's what I do for you I don't use sketches. I sometimes look at them for inspiration. I love MFT sketches. I love many sketches. I love people who use sketches. But I, it's like every time I start with some sketches, I get off track. And so, yeah. Um, but you can go to my blog, see a still photo of each one of the cards and all of the measurements. So it's a lot like a sketch. In fact, maybe more helpful because I I say specifically what each little piece is measured as. So, um, you also may notice that my desk changed <laughs> in the middle of this video too. It was a very exciting time in life. Um, yeah, so I have a new desk surface that I'm working on. And um, hopefully it will make my videos have a little bit more light in them since it's not a dark desktop anymore, but we'll see. Anyway, um... Those first cards, because the cut aparts were little, I decided to leave a lot of the card base showing. So I cut the background piece a little smaller than I might otherwise, so that the cut aparts didn't look so lost on the expansive paper in the back. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. I will very often just cut beautiful pattern papers to uh, four by five and a quarter and then put them on my standard a2 size card which is four and a quarter by five and a half but I make a lot of these paper pad tutorials not as many as some people do and I'm sh and I owe people always ask for more but I, I just try to mix it up a little bit and I think sketches can be helpful for that but like I said I just I'm so bad at using them because I'll start with them and then I, I just I'm so dedicated to using up all the scraps that I get frustrated because I feel like I have to be always cutting into a new piece. So anyway, I also picked up the cardstock icon stickers for pumpkin spice. What I love is that Doodlebug now has stamp sets that coordinate. So you don't have to get the stickers if you like to color and I usually do. But again, when I'm trying to create longer videos like this where I'm making so many cards it can take a really long time to do all that coloring I have done it in the past and I have some doodlebug tutorials where you can see like the colored images instead but I think you can get a lot of similar ideas with just the stickers so that's what I'm using today just to keep things a little bit faster essentially and the stickers are really fun for creating little scenes because they include like the animals and there is some of the coffee cup images as well but there's also like lots of like little things to pair with it like there's the I want to say macaroons but that's not what they're called is it the little cookies sorry guys there's like little cookies that you can put with the coffee cups or like little mushrooms that you can put with the woodland animals etc like little bugs too so that's why I think that they are good for making scenes. Let me know what those cookies are called if you know. I, I like I know what it looked like how it's spelled, but I don't know how to say it. They're little French cookies. Anyway, um, what you might not uh, know is off to the side there, I have those tailored expression um, sentiment strips all ready to go. So I just kind of like go I lean over and I'm like, ooh, which which sentiment do I think will work? And I can create these super, super quick cards because I just take the stickers and I go, hmm, which two stickers might or a couple stickers might combo well. Okay, what sentiment do I think pairs with them? These ones I all chose a happy Thanksgiving. But I will say with this paper pad, there's a lot of really cute fall stuff, but I don't think it's really limited to just Thanksgiving type cards or fall cards. Um, there's a couple of images that I think you could mix up well. Um, 
after I was making a couple cards, I thought this was a great opportunity to use up some twine. I recently had kind of gone through my stash of ribbons and fibers, etc., and tried to reduce the overall number that I had. And um, I've donated them to different organizations. I didn't just get rid of them. But I just find I don't use them a lot. However, I do like twine. And I wanted to show you some ideas for using it up. It's something I have used with 6x6 paper pad tutorials in the past as well because it's relatively, when you tape it down, it isn't so thick that it makes your paper so lumpy and bumpy that you can't directly tape it to the paper. I think it often looks better if you do add a little dimension behind it so that it isn't so bumpy. I hope that you understand what I mean there. Like, um, basically, the cardstock, if I were to glue it directly down to the paper there, where the twine is kind of folded over the back and taped down, it's going to sort of bump off the page. So here what I'm doing is I'm taking some pieces of kind of like chipboard. They're like literally packaging. So sometimes when you get something in the mail and they put a, like a thick piece of uh, cardstock, cardboard behind it so that things don't get bent in the mail, that. <laughs> um, and it adds just a tiny, tiny bit of dimension. But if you don't have things like that, what I also do is I'll take all of my cardstock scraps because most of my cardstock is 110 pound or higher, like really thick stuff. So I'll take two layers of scrap cardstock, glue them together, and I'll use that to sort of pop things up too. If you don't have either of those or want to use either of those ideas, foam tape also does the same thing. But I often find foam tape to be really thick. And as you know, if you watch my 6x6 paper pad tutorials, I'm cheap and I don't like spending money on it. I am using my Barely Arts glue to adhere everything together. Um, sorry, I'm using my Barely Arts glue to adhere small things. Um, when I'm like taping down big pieces of paper, I tend to use my ATG. And for little things, I like Barely Arts glue. Both of them will do both things. But those are just kind of like my two favorite adhesives in case you're curious. So there was this cut apart that says my family with a bunch of hearts underneath it. And my family is a weird thing to put on the front of a card, I guess. I don't know. It seems like one to me. Like I'm used to putting sentiments on the front of cards. I'm thinking there, like if you were making a scrapbook page, you'd list all the members of your family who showed up to your Thanksgiving dinner, for instance. But I don't need that. So I'm taking it and I'm flipping it over on its side and I'm leaving the ends of the hearts hanging out, but I think that that makes them kind of look like leaves. You could make a thicker sentiment and cover them completely, but I kind of liked those little co colors sort of poking out and you'll be able to see it a little bit better on the blog. I do try, I'm trying to keep it a little bit more zoomed out so that you can see everything I'm working on here, but by covering that with a sentiment, I now have another sort of cut apart I can use. I picked two little critters from the sticker set that I thought matched well. And again, because this is a smaller cut apart that I'm working with, I'm going to use less pattern paper and I'm going to leave more of the card base showing so that they don't get lost. I didn't really have a plan. This is kind of what I do sometimes. I like, I cut the paper in ways that don't leave a lot of scraps. So for instance, three by three squares from a six by six paper, there's no scraps. But also if you cut three by two and a half, you'll also have a three by three and a half piece. And so those are two rectangles that tend to kind of combo well on a, on a card. So when I'm making decisions about what sizes to cut, it's more based on not leaving scraps, and that's, again, why I'm not so good with the sketches. I'm really going to try to use as many of these cut aparts as possible, and the simplest thing I'm going to do is just cover the parts I don't like with these sentiments. And a couple times that was really easy, like with the My Family there, and this one, I forget what it says. I think it says I'm thankful for. No, that's a different one. Uh, my favorite memory. So that's very specifically for scrapbooking. But if I cover that with a sentiment, 
And then I find two little tiny stickers. Now it already has a leaf in the corner. So maybe it looks silly that there's like this little tiny leaf with hearts and a mouse, but I think it looks really cute. And yeah, like there's, it's a little random, but I, I don't know, like Doodlebug to me isn't, is so much about being whimsical that I don't so much mind. I think it's okay. I will say what's nice also, um, when I saw these tiny sentiments, like how it cut them out, how small they were, I was a little bit concerned, but actually my ATG, which is the pink one, and I think it's like a quarter inch, you can actually use the ATG to um, glue on the back of those. Like it's about the same width as the tape. I was a little bit concerned that the tape was going to be too thick and that I was always going to have to use liquid glue or something else to adhere them down and to me like that's not a problem I hear a lot of things down with my liquid glue and like I said I kind of just have both of those on my table at the same time um, most of the time but I just like the convenience that it happened to work out that way you'll also see I have just some regular old scotch tape on my table and that's because when I'm going to be taping down the twine um, I find that it's really easy to just you know tape it down with like some, with standard scotch tape a couple things about that though um the it's not acid well I guess you probably can get tape that's acid free like it's not going to last forever but neither is my other like you can get ATG tape that's acid free too but I don't have that I'm not worried about it being archival I know it's more of a concern of scrapbookers than card makers traditionally but just like I mean Copics aren't archival either and a lot of alcohol markers and a lot of people like to use those um but also as far as I understand, I don't think scotch tape is recyclable, but because I'm adding twine, my cards are already not recyclable. Um, I tend to avoid, like I, I like to use paper a lot so that I keep my cards recyclable, but sometimes it's also fun to add embellishments. So, and I know a lot of people don't um, recycle the cards anyway. They hold on to them for a really long time or um, they don't know if it's recyclable and it winds up in the trash anyway. So just, I don't know. That's kind of a random side note. But um, the twine is much easier to use if you just use a tiny bit of tape on the back. And you'll see that for the sake of speed, I often tape one end, wrap all the way around, and then just tape the other end. If you wanted to save your twine or fiber, if you want to use less of it, you could, um, like, because I'm basically I'm making like two little wrap, like um, strings across, you could create the same look and just like cut the two strings and tape both of them. But then you'd be using less twine, but more tape. So I don't know that you're really saving yourself that much. Uh, certainly not saving yourself time in my experience. I, a lot of times they say to do things in odd numbers. So like if you're gonna put embellishments, put three embellishments, like three enamel dots or three stickers. And I sometimes adhere by that rule and I'm thinking about the twine like I only wrap it around two times some people might say oh you're supposed to wrap it around three times so that it's in an odd group but um, I find the two times looks cute as well Uh, but yeah if it looks maybe a little bit off or funny to you maybe try the three times and see if that appeals to you better here I'm trying to figure out how to use this sunflower cut apart beyond the fact that the cut aparts had these odd sentiments on them or well again not odd for scrapbookers but odd as a card maker beyond that they're also like really long and thin which looks a little bit weird on a card and so I'm trying to think of ways to sort of break them up well I thought maybe these sunflowers could be poking out from underneath a piece of paper kind of like a tab or a tag and I decided to go with that, but it is quite substantial still. So I kind of needed to balance it out. And I'm so I'm going to add this sticker in the top left and then the sunflowers in the bottom right. And I think I, it achieves what I wanted. I will say this is not my favorite card. I make another one with the owl coming up, which is also not my favorite card. I really did find these long, skinny die cuts or cut aparts quite challenging um feel free not to use them these papers are double-sided there's a whole side on the back that I could have just used instead but I always do like to challenge myself as much as I was a little bit bummed that they didn't turn out quite the way I wanted 
I was happy to have a challenge. I want to show you that you don't have to be intimidated by these little odd things that sometimes come in paper pads where you're like, hmm, what were they thinking here? It's probably because they were sometimes they design the paper thinking about the six by six and the card maker, and sometimes they design the paper thinking about the scrapbooker. I will say some companies seem to make slightly different paper pads. Like the patterns are a little bit different for the 12 by 12 size than they are for the six by six size or the six by eight or whatever their smaller size is. And I think that's pretty cool. I appreciate that. I noticed that, um, I think P13 does that. And I, I did a Christmas pad with them recently. So that might be worth checking out. But anyway, I'm a sucker for doodlebugs. So <laughs> I think there's a certain amount where doodlebugs can, can print whatever they want and I'm still gonna buy it because it's just so darn cute. All right, so I also wanted to use these little squares, even though they were going to be like super challenging because again, they're tiny little squares and I couldn't like cut them apart and use them separately on cards. I thought, well, what if I pick out groupings? Also, in the middle of all these squares, it's F-A-L-L -L, fall. Cute, but I don't want like a random A or L or whatever in my grouping. So I'm going to try to very strategically cut these so that their sentiments kind of make sense and there's no random letter. I was able to get two groupings that are two squares by three squares. So like this one says, your sweetest pie, hello sunshine, and love you latte, and like one other thing. But like those all are kind of cardish sentiments. And then this um, then I'm going to have another set that says happy fall. And then all the other pictures around it actually say nothing. So I thought that one worked really, really well. Then, so after I have those three by twos, the rest of the paper pad, I'm sorry, the rest of the paper, I'm actually just going to use the backside on the back are, is a yellow background with a bunch of fall leaves, really cute too. And I'll have a small square and a larger square from, you know, what's left. But I thought that so I was quite pleased that I was able to figure out how to strategically cut them such that I could get two cards out of it and in a way that left me two nice chunks to use on the back, like to use the back of. I hope that makes sense. I did feel like I had to take some craft cardstock and create a mat for these. On some of my recent Christmas card videos, I have put mats around all of my different papers and... Um, I don't always do that. I think it looks great. I know many people who do. It's certainly more time consuming, which is okay. Um, you know, take as much time as you like to make your cards. I kind of like the way that the patterns look against each other sometimes. Like sometimes I think putting like here, I could put craft around everything. Like I really like the way that looks, uh, but I just don't always want to do it. And sometimes I just really like the way the two patterns look next to each other. This card to be honest, is not a very good example of that. That pumpkin, there's like, I guess they're pumpkin spice donuts. So that donut paper on top of that other paper, they're both really busy. So maybe that wasn't the best call. And then I'm going to put twine on top of it because we're just going to be super, super busy on this card, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, I did though feel like because those squares were inherently busy, because there were, you know, just so many little, um, I guess, not really scenes because they're just an object, but like there are so many little pictures on them. They needed a break between them and the, the pattern paper in the background. I could have picked, like looked through the collection and tried to find a pattern paper that was not solid, but like semi-solid, like this brown plaid that's on the back here. Um, and the paper with the coffee cups that's up there in the top left corner that has a blue plaid on the back so I could have done something like that and matted it but honestly I didn't want to use my pattern paper I wanted to be able to keep the pattern paper for other things and not just use them as a mat because that would take up a big chunk of pattern paper so here again because there's the twine if I were to try to glue this big square like the panel made of all the little squares if I were to try to glue that over the twine 
it would kind of bump over where the twine was. So I'm taking another piece of that thick chipboardy stuff. Um, or again, two layers of cardstock will do and using that to bump it up. Next, I, I think, so that leaf paper that I was just putting under there is the back side of all the squares. The back side of the coffee cups, like I mentioned, is this blue plaid. And I thought that was also helpful because that card I just made, I thought it was like ooh, really busy, which I just mentioned. I wanted to tone it down for this one. So I restrained myself and I put this blue plaid with it to sort of knock things back a bit. I probably use twine in some places that maybe I wouldn't have if I wasn't trying to like deliberately use it. Um, but I, you know, in sharing these paper pad videos in the past, people have said they really do appreciate seeing how to use up some other supplies. I think we all, sorry, I think many crafters have a tendency to like you know, you get into something and you use twine on a couple cards, for instance. And I'm, I'm just saying that mostly that this is what happens to me. Like, I'll use twine on a couple cards. And I'm like, oh, I really love the look. So now I've got to get it in a few more colors because maybe I'll need orange twine next time. And then I wind up with more twine than I could ever use. So that's kind of some part of the reason I like to use things like that in these videos. Another quick thing I wanted to mention. Oh, so this is the owl card that I said before. Like, I don't really like it. Uh, I just had a lot of paper scraps left at this point. I had a lot of these, like, really thin strips of paper. And so a lot of times if you stack thin strips like that, it looks good. And I think that part of it looks good. But then the long, skinny element, I just really couldn't get into it. I, I just... Maybe I'll cut it up next time or something, but I, I didn't like it. Or I, you know, I should use the back, which I will eventually do on one of them. I, I think this, the owl here is like my, my breaking point. I'm like, nope, I'm not going to force myself to use another one of these long skinny pieces. I'm just going to turn it over. Um, but anyway, uh, in general, I think the, the stacking design works if you have a bunch of scraps left. And you actually could stack them all the way up to the top of the card but here because I had two of each of these four I thought I could make two cards when I design a card with six by six paper pads there's often at least two of the same sheet in each paper pad so like for instance this paper pad does have two of each design some have like four of each design I'll then usually design a card and make two of it because if I have the paper to make one, I of course have the paper to make two because there's two of each sheet of paper. I'll Sometimes I'll glue together the first one, but sometimes I'll just kind of like lay out all the elements, think how I want it to go. And then I'll take all the pieces for both cards or four cards if it happens to have, sometimes just three, whatever. Like I'll take all the pieces for all the cards that are going to be the same and I'll place it in a zip top bag. The zip top bags can be like regular old sandwich bags if you wanted to do a similar idea. I happen to use these like thick five by eight bags because that's what I also store my stamp sets in. So it's already here in my craft room and it happens to fit these cards quite nicely. But court size bags, a lot of bags in your kitchen will work. Anyway, I take all the elements and I put it in a bag and I adhere everything later. As I've mentioned, if you've seen my videos in the past, the reason I like to do that is one, because I feel like if I keep designing, if I like keep with my flow, I can make a lot more cards and my ideas keep flowing. Or if I stop and I glue everything together, I sometimes feel more like fatigued or like I run out of ideas faster. And when I have all those little pieces, parts grouped together, I can then assemble the cards while doing something else. Uh, one thing I had suggested was, you know, like while you're on like a Zoom meeting, you know, or catch and doing a video chat with somebody, you could potentially be assembling the cards because it doesn't really take a lot of brain power. You're just kind of putting everything together, just, you know, putting the glue down. Um, and I also kind of, um, it reminds me of how knitters will be knitting a scarf while talking or watching TV or doing something else because they don't really have to think about it. And it's kind of the same thing for me. So just a little, like if you ever see me kind of just like shoving things off to the side before they're glued down, that's why I'm doing that. Um, I, as I got towards the end, this brown paper had the cute little yellow background with all the animals on it. And I really liked that paper. 
but I kind of needed something that was a little bit more toned down. There were a lot, Doodlebug has a lot of busy pattern papers, which I love. They're so cute. Like that's what draws me to Doodlebug, but you need enough of the subtler papers to tone it down. If you're struggling with that though, bring in some more solid cardstock. Like instead of using this brown tone on tone, so there's actually all the animals are patterned there. Instead of using that, you could just use a piece of brown cardstock or craft cardstock like you're using for the base. Because that pumpkin paper is busy and I've made way too many cards that are way too busy today, I have decided another like to tone this down again. And as I mentioned before, by leaving more of the card base, that's a way of toning it down. So like I did that when I had the tiny cut aparts, but I'm doing that here because that uh, pumpkin pie paper is adorable, but it's, it's got, you know, it's a lot. It's uh, has a lot of them on it. And so by not making such a big background, I'm able to tone it down. The yellow background with the leaves is again, the other side is those squares. So because I couldn't use all of them, I am able to flip it over and use the other side. It's a touch too busy for that owl in my opinion, but I think it generally works. And I think the fox actually looked really cute on it. I'm going to use up some twine again. I actually, when I picked out the twine that I would use with this collection, of course I thought about what colors would be good, but I also picked out three or four that didn't have a lot on them so that I could really use them up and feel really accomplished at the end when the whole sticker sheet was gone, the whole little container, I don't know, what, do you, what do you call those, like spool of twine? There's a word for it. They're like embroidery floss things. Anyway, that whole thing is gone and the whole six by six paper pad is gone. I just felt like that would just feel like an accomplishment. So I did, I did kind of cheat, I guess, and pick ones that would be really easy to use up because there wasn't much on them to begin with. I'm getting a little bit towards the end here. So you're going to see that I'm mostly working with scraps and this, I still have that really long skinny cut apart that says fall traditions. And as I mentioned, when I was making that owl card, I was done. I was, I was done problem solving. I was like, I don't, I don't care. I'm just gonna turn it over and use the dots on the back. Um, and I mean, I think that's hundred percent the right call. Like I challenge you to, look at your paper pads in a like creative way and not be deterred. Like when you see, oh, this paper pad includes a design that takes up the whole six by six sheet and I don't make big cards. Don't let that stop you. I've used paper like that before. Or you're like, oh, these cut aparts are a weird size or I don't like the saying on them. You know, go for it and, and try to make it work. But also, if you don't like it, if it, it's not fun, if you don't enjoy that challenge, turn it over and use the back or recycle it, toss it, give it away, something like don't feel like you have to use every single paper either. Don't hold on to it for, I mean, you can, of course, do what you want, but don't feel like you need to hold on to it and one day you have to solve that problem. You know, let yourself go. Like, be okay with it. So I don't know. And I, that's more a pep talk for myself too, because yeah, I was really, really forcing myself to use some papers that I didn't like so much or some, that's something I just didn't like, but like that were more of a challenge for me. Okay. Sorry that I'm out of frame here, guys. Uh, again, I, I switched up some things on my desk and so I'm kind of getting used to a few things and yeah, this didn't work out. So here I'm gluing things to the bottom of this cardstock, but don't worry, I'm actually going to take them all off. We're not going to do that anyway, because I, what I have left at this point in the paper pad are these little tiny strips that are like two inches long. And then these two, I want to say they're like three by three squares, maybe a little smaller, but I have like these two squares and then these little strips of paper. And I have two of each of these things, but that's it. Like there's, and then like what's off to the side there on the left, like tiny, tiny bits, but I have two of each of those things. So I was like, well, I bet I could still design a card. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all those little tiny strips as like little tabs coming off or little tags coming off the side of the square and then I'm gonna which is a little bit hard to see here so again sorry about that but a little grouping of stickers I don't have a lot of stickers left 
but I certainly have enough to create two little scenes. And also, I'm not worried about using every single sticker. Here's where I remembered or where I noticed that I was off camera. Um, I don't feel like I have to use all the stickers because I know that when the when I've made all the cards, I can go inside the cards and add all of those extra st stickers and I can add all of the extra pieces of pattern paper. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, if you don't like making cards out of those scraps, like that card had a lot of background showing, like if that's not for you, do this instead. Take those little scraps that you have left and glue them inside of the um, cards. So here I have a green strip left and I thought, well, that'll be perfect. I'll create like a little, like that'll be grass. Like I'll pretend that's grass and I'll put the little mushrooms that are left or like here I have a sun and a cloud. So I thought, well, that'll go in the top corner of a card because that looks like a sky. I do tend to think about what I'm putting in on the inside. I don't just put random scraps here and there on the inside. Although usually that will still look great. Like you don't have to think too hard about it because everything coordinates. But if I have a coffee cup on the outside of the card, well, now that I have this teacup sticker left, I think, oh, those go a little bit better together. It will make sense. It's not like on the outside, it's woodland critters. And then all of a sudden on the inside, I have a different theme. If you do, that's fine. Because again, everything in this collection goes together. It's supposed to match. Somebody designed it that way. But uh, it can be fun to make your inside really, really match your outside. And I'll keep doing that until all of the stickers are gone and all the pattern paper is gone. I just wanted to show you, I cut six of that tailored expression stamp set and I still had all those sentiments left and created these 30 cards. Now, four of them didn't get the sentiments, but I was able to get pretty much everything I wanted just from those six passes of the machines. So that's pretty awesome. All right. That's it for my cards video today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to all the products I used in the video description below. I would love for you to leave me a comment. I love talking to you guys in the comments and I will also leave you some videos here at the end to take a look at. Thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.